Support for this podcast comes from Canon. Canon knows when it comes to home printers, it needs to be love at first print. If you don't click immediately, you're in for a long-term relationship with serious trust issues. Canon have designed their wireless printers to be as easy to use as possible with chat support, step-by-step videos and wireless connectivity on most models to get you set up for printing in no time at all. Visit canon.com.au forward slash print to discover all the ways Canon supports you. Welcome to The Art of Decluttering. I'm Kirsty Ferugia. And I'm Amy Ravel. And this week we are talking to you about board games and puzzles. This episode was brought to you by Amy Kelman. Well, it was requested by Amy Kelman. Yeah, that's what I mean, brought to you. Uh-huh, okay, just checking. Yeah. Amy's famous. <laughs> Amy was in our episode 97 Seven on cancer. called Cancer, so go back and listen to hers. So we are talking about board games and puzzles, which is awesome because Kirsten and I love playing, playing board games. We do. So we're going to talk about ways to declutter your board games and puzzles. We're going to talk about ways to organise your board games and puzzles. We're going to give you some ideas of where to donate ones that you're not using anymore. And we're going to share with you what we do. And we might even share with you our favourite board game. Oh. How could I choose? You're going to have to. Do I need to give you one board game and one card game? Maybe. We could do that. Okay. Yep. So you've got to think about that because we're going to do that at the end. Okay. So you've you've got to be distracted. I was going to say you're going to have to concentrate. All right. Let's do it now. Okay. You tell me your favorite board game. Mm, That I own or that I've ever played? Ever played. I think I I really like Ticket to Ride. Yeah. Mm. It's a pretty good one. Which one do you like? Which version? I like all versions. <laughs> We've just got the American version, mm-hmm. but we play the Europe version with our friends Dave and Joan. And they had so the Europe version has bridges, and it also has something else that the American version doesn't have. Boats. On. No, there's no boats in oh, that one. I, my parents have got one with boats. Oh, it's really annoying because you have to choose how many of trains you're going to have and how many boats <gasps> at the start yeah Ooh. and so then sometimes you'll pick up and you've got to like you know from st petersburg to london or you know whatever to yeah. whatever yeah and you haven't got enough trains because you chose too many boats oh. or you know anyway interesting so ticket to ride's your one ticket i think so until somebody mentions another one that i go oh no no, no that's my <laughs> favorite <laughs> do you have a favorite card game um, I think my favourite card game at the moment is Sushi Go. Oh, I love Sushi Go. <laughs> I also like Hanabi, but my kids hate Hanabi, but I really like it. Yeah, you kind of got to have brothers and sisters with. have had, whoa, big arguments over <laughs> Hanabi. And I like Exploding Kittens and Sleeping Queens. Oh, they're all by the same people, aren't they? I do How like them. How about you? Um, I think probably my favourite board game, I'm going to split it because you got to name two card games, mm-hmm. is Risk. I love Risk. Never played it. It's really good. It's world domination. Yeah, okay. And I also like Monopoly. Like yeah. I like a bit of family Monopoly. We grew up playing Monopoly. I just really like it. Oliver and I like Monopoly. Emily hates it. Simon doesn't play board games very much. Emily hated it until this week. Oh, and that's she gold. Won. All oh, right. Okay. I so see. So that's like, because Oliver usually wins or I win. Yeah. Usually Oliver. So then she's never liked it. And because it, and then, and she doesn't like it because Ollie and I play by ourselves. And when you've got two players and you're playing free parking money. Yeah. And then it just goes on forever. It's a long game. And she hates it because she doesn't get any attention from me because I'm busy playing Monopoly. <laughs> right. So I really kind of want to get the credit card Monopoly. So it's quick. No, but there's so. I know, I know, I know. I, know, I can't I know. even play You're not the teaching kids about the value of money. Oh. oh no, I just like the old school. I don't even like the the updated ones where you deal in millions instead of like one dollar. Oh, see, see, we have um, Melbourne Monopoly, so I can teach the kids all of the, oh, that's sweet. All of Melbourne, even though like Eddie Had Stadium it do- is no longer called yeah, Eddie Had. That's okay. They know yeah. what it is. Um, anyway, my other game. No. Is on. I'm I'm actually not going to pick a card game because I love all card games. Uh, no, I do like five hundred. Five hundred's good. I'm going to call Canasta though. Yeah, Canasta's above five hundred. But I also love chess. <gasps> Come and play with Ollie. I love chess. He's a chess master. So is Jesse. I still can't beat Jesse. We should get them both to play against each Let's other. Let's do it next time we're together, or our families are together because we're together right now. Okay, yep. so they're our favourite games. So I'd let's- love to hear this week on Facebook. 
community page what your favorite games are yeah. or if you're a puzzler yes oh, tell me what your relationship with puzzles I are. i love puzzles until i'm about three quarters of the way through oh i'm such a non-finisher you're a starter no i do actually really really enjoy finishing them i really do i really you do you need someone to come in though and and finish from 75 to 99 yeah kind of and then you're Sometimes. like oh look i got the final piece <laughs> i did it do you know look what um, i did everybody my sister's sister-in-law like my cousins s- nephews brothers yeah. half sister um their son one of their sons always steals the missing like the last piece so no. he can be the person to put that's it not in. okay yeah um but Anyway, um, I re- no, I, I do like, I really love puzzles and I really love it when Simon does them with me mm. because then it's more Yeah, we fun. love doing them together. I really, yeah, I much prefer to do puzzles together. My aunt's a huge puzzle fanatic and my friend Colleen is always putting puzzles up on Facebook that she's completed. Do you like puzzles that are like um, pastels and gr- like the scenery where you can't actually tell the difference between like the shades or do you like puzzles that are bright and busy but there's like definition so would you prefer I, like an outback scene or a sky that's covered in hot air balloons that are all different colors i have no preference okay what about you you I, clearly do yeah i like the ones that you definite. can the definite ones <laughs> who Hands up, listeners, who thought I was going to say the one that's, like, gradient. No, I want black and white. That's what I want. Hello. <laughs> uh, could have picked that in my life. And I cannot do puzzles online. Like, you know how people do yeah. puzzles on their iPads? My mum does that all the time. So does my mum. I wasn't oh, going to name and shame. That's why they're besties. That's, I wasn't going to name and shame, but let's name and shame. Our mums do that. I can't. I can't. I'm like, just get a puzzle. I'll, I'm like, I'll give you puzzles. Anyway. My mum refuses to do puzzles, I think, because she doesn't want to be like her older sister. <laughs> puzzles are awesome. They're good for your brain and they're nice, quiet, reflective. I always stay up too late if I'm doing puzzles. Me like, too. I'm like 1am going, just one more piece, just one more piece. Yeah, but then you, it's like it's like me reading a book. Yes. It's like just one more chapter, just one more chapter, just one more chapter. And you feel really tired at the end of the chapter, but as soon as you flick the page to the new one, you've got like, Ping! well, because chapters always leave you on a dun dun dun. Yeah. And you have to turn the next page. All right. Do you yeah, reckon anyway. we should share with people some ideas around decluttering? Maybe. Or should, Maybe. is this the end of it if we just like our recommendations yeah. on board games Maybe. today? You know, we did have a review on iTunes saying that we waffle. <laughs> <laughs> we did. So let's take their advice and not waffle anymore. Tell us some tricks on decluttering puzzles and games. What do you do with them? How do you know when it's time? You know when it's time when you haven't played with them in a long time. And even though school holidays have just been, you still haven't managed to get them out and play with them during the school holidays. You know when they're for three-year-olds and your kids are 13 and 25. (laughs) Yeah, we find that when we go to the games cupboard, so we've got a cupboard that has all our games in, and I'm like, why don't we play this? And they're both like, nah. Nah. I'm like, great, let's donate it. It's like when you're trying a piece of clothing and you look in the mirror and you take it off. Yeah, you're like, nah. It's time to get rid of that. Don't put it back on a coat hanger. So that's a great, if your kids don't want to do it anymore, it's a great hint that it's time to get rid of it. Or do what Jesse does with his Lego and play with it one last time. We talked about that in that episode a couple of weeks ago in the Lego episode. Jesse, your son, just as he's about to sell his Lego, he plays with it one last time, doesn't he? So I like that idea for games and puzzles. He's not so not necessarily your two thousand piece puzzle, but maybe your thirty piece puzzle. <laughs> yeah, one last time. And if you're going to sell them, that one last time yep. is to check you've got all the pieces, to take a photo of it, and just to let it go after that. But I also want to encourage you to let them go, even if they are missing a piece. Oh yeah, but be not op shop. No. What do you mean? I've picked up op shop ones where I've been missing a few pieces. And how annoyed were you? It's a, a, annoying, but at least I got a lot of it done. Nope. No, I, my point no, is no. My no, point is don't to the do hand. don't do a two thousand pu- piece puzzle just to see if there's one there, mm. unless that's what you really want to do. No, but if you have a two thousand piece puzzle and you're doing it and you realise it's missing a piece, don't donate it. Don't donate it to Amy's. <laughs> <laughs> donate it to mine. It's you're fine. hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to buy board games. Like if you've got games that the kids play once or twice or play it at a friend's house, you can 
borrow them from people. Yes. Like board games are perfect for borrowing because yeah. you can go through your Monopoly season or your Ticket to Ride season and then pass it back. And if you really, really, really love it, then you invest in it. And that's why it's a great puzzle. Uh, games, board games are so fantastic to borrow from friends to decide whether or not you want to invest in it mm-hmm. because a game can look awesome at the shop and then you get it home and you're like, what, what? This is so complicated and complex and everybody's walked out while I'm still reading the instructions. I hate that feeling. (laughs) So borrow it, decide if you like it, decide if it's worth the investment or if you even need to invest in it or if you can just keep borrowing it every couple of months from friends. Um, There are, did you know, doing some research for this episode. Hello, this could be the first time we've done research for an episode. (laughs) You can borrow board games from libraries. Lots of universities. Oh. Universities. Maybe, I mean, they probably don't lend them to three-year-olds and (laughs) 41-year-olds who still, who aren't at uni. But universities, lots of universities have board games. That's awesome. Some libraries have board games and game shops like the Good Games in Greensboro. You can borrow them or you can go down and play them there. Yeah, that's cool. And... Do you know what I found while I was looking? What? While I was doing some dun 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 research, um, that there is giant games that you can hire for parties. Yeah, they're cool. Like giant Jenga chess. and giant chairs. Yes. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes, the one I found in Sydney for Sydney folks. That is really cool. And I think be liberal in your donation and decluttering of games if you have a lot. If you only have two board games and you play both of them, Good on you. But if you're 40 and you only play four, I want you to just get in there and not 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 declutter out of fear. Don't think, oh, but what if the kids might want to play it next year? Just get rid of it. You need the space and the headspace. Decluttering, decluttering, decluttering. Unless, unless, unless you're a huge gamer and yeah, you but do they, play with all of them. Yeah, but, that's but if you're different. not playing with them. Yeah, but if you're not playing with yeah, them. Get rid of them. Yeah. Or if you keep going to play it and it's missing a vital piece ah oh, is there anything worse yeah either replace the piece because you can often yeah contact the manufacturer or make a piece like yeah make a substitute yeah. i remember like a game of memory that we had growing up that like one of them was a piece of paper that someone had drawn on <laughs> well, so that was always the that one. first one that yeah. anyone got but that was part of the memory yeah Part and the oh, memory game, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it, it, you can't do that so well with the game of five hundred. <laughs> no, that's difficult. When you know that the that red card in the blue pack is the jack of spades, not quite. <laughs> kind so, of gives it away a little yeah. bit. But yes, um, we definitely want to encourage you to really assess which games that you are actually playing with and ones that you have outgrown for whatever reason. Yep, don't be afraid to get rid of them. We have some amazing sponsors that help the Art of Decluttering get on the air every single week. We're on every single podcast app. We're on YouTube. We're even in Virgin Australia flights and their in-flight entertainment system. So if you want to reach our growing community, we would love you to come on board as a sponsor. So if that is of interest to you, email hello at artofdecluttering.com.au and we'll get our sponsorship kit straight out to you. Now, back to the show. Now, for the ones that you are keeping, let's talk about Curse the way that uh, you... Oh, uh, oh, what? No, let's talk about where we can declutter them too first. Okay. Op shops. Op shops. Preschools. Schools, childcare centres, especially for games yep. that your preschoolers have grown out of or, you know, they were pre- they played when they were preschoolers. Yep. Age care facilities. They can might want upwards and different things that people can play. Puzzles. Puzzles, yeah, great yeah. idea. Special needs school, speech pathologist, occupational therapist. Ugh, so many ideas. Yeah, Good and um, doctor surgeries. No. <clears throat> Ignore what she just said. No doctor surgery wants anything that has pieces because it's going to get lost. Mm-hmm. Unless you've got like a boggle that's in what, the container. Yeah, or like um, an abacus or like little games. That's okay. Kids, you know. Yeah, just no parts. Yep, and libraries. <laughs> if your library, if your local library does lend out games, contact them and see if they want yours. Yeah, I love it. Okay, now okay. you want to talk about organizing? I do because I love organizing games. Ooh, she's like vibing, like she's literally vibrating with excitement <laughs> over this. 
I'm just like a total snaplock fanatic when it you comes are. to puzzles. You are. Every puzzle, if it can, goes in a snaplock bag because missing pieces sucks. Yep. Big do you time. agree? I totally agree. I do like a good Ziploc bag when it comes to puzzles. Yeah. The problem is when you can't find the Ziploc big enough. <laughs> so there's a couple of things. Like, uh, sorry, I, I mean like particularly for little kids Ziploc uh, puzzles. You know, like the board, pu- yeah. like the IKEA board ones come in yeah, that I know size. IKEA ones, but oh. not everybody has access to no, IKEA. I know, but I'm sure you can find something somewhere. Something somewhere. Something somewhere. Um, Amazon is your friend. Yeah, probably actually. Yeah. Or IKEA deliver now, so you can just order yeah. online. Yeah. There is a contention. Do you put the pieces in the bag and the bag in the box? Or, like me, do you cut out the picture on the front and put that in the bag as well, get rid of the whole box so you've just got bags? I like bags in boxes Mm -hmm. because boxes stack nicely if you have enough room. Yep. Um, And depending on the quantity, like how how many you're talking about. Mm. And I particularly like Ziploc bags for the kids' puzzles that, you know, like baby puzzles where you take the piece in and out and, it you know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, where it's got a board. Oh, hopefully listeners also know what I'm talking about. Um, so I do a combination of both. Mm-hmm. It just depends on, I think for me, it depends on where they're being stored. Excellent. That makes total sense. It, make happy? It, it always makes me happy. Okay. In our house. Not we, everything I say makes you oh, happy. No, we but, just had the doctor's yeah, episode. Which is the doctor's <laughs> isn't the episode. The episode. No, of the, meaning like the episode the, of... Discontent. Yes, I'm with you. Um, So what we did when the kids were little, we did lots and lots and lots of puzzles. So we would just cut out the picture, stuff it it in the bag, and all the bags went in a container and keep storage. that's what we did. So it wasn't stacked. I think that you're right, that's messy. But if you can have like a box with them in, then that totally works. And that works really well for little kids' puzzles. Yes. But, you know, if you're getting... The more complex is harder. Yeah, if you've got a 2,000 piece 3000 piece puzzle then it's often just better to keep the box i would agree with you and keep it in a snap block bag in the box yeah and same with um what about what about what about let me ask you what you what do you do with game board games Mm -hmm. that the lids have broken and the boxes have broken you know like yeah snap block bags (laughs) The whole game, the whole like game. a Monopoly game in a yeah. snap block bag? Yeah, so our Monopoly, so we've still got the box of our Monopoly, but within that, all the money's in a snap block bag, the houses and hotels yep. in a snap block bag, yep. the chance and community chests are in a yep. snap block bag, and the pieces and dice in a snap block bag. Yep. So if the box happened to break, I would then get a big snap block bag, put <laughs> all of those in it, and I would put the board in it. What about when you go to client homes and the the Boxes are actually... Often we just fix them. Yeah. With yeah, what? Sticky tape. Thank you. This, yeah. Is that what you were doing? This is the whole point of... Oh, is that where you were going? Yeah. Right. Do you do the same? You yep. fix them? Yeah. Yeah. It's not that hard. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes they're beyond repair. Yeah. Or they've been tried to fix or the kids have just keep stepping on them anyway. Yeah. So they need to go. Snap lock bags are honestly, clear ones are great for board games. Yeah. If you've got really complicated board games, you could get a small container so a, a flat container can actually put things in. So I've done that sometimes with kids' puzzles. If the parents are like, I do not want to open a snap lock bag every time they want to put Thomas in and out of the puzzle board. Mm-hmm. And so rather we would just stack them all up, all the puzzle boards, in a box and the kids can pull that out and put that back in themselves because we don't need to make more work for ourselves. No, no, we do not. <laughs> we are about simple living here at the Art of Declutter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cupboards, open shelves, behind cupboard doors, open shelves. If all board games were in uniform size boxes. <laughs> this is Amy. Amy would love all boxes to be yeah. 30 by 30. Yeah, I would regulate. If I could regulate the world, I would regulate board game sizes. Just to, the box. To I, Ikea. This is to an Ikea size. <laughs> <laughs> but alas... <laughs> That is not the case in this world. Um, oh, can I give you a hot tip on how we store our cards? Sistema, you know, the ones that we use in the kitchen and that kind of stuff. Click. They've got little itty bitties that are 
the size of a deck of cards. And so as soon as we buy any card game, we ditch the packet because those packets don't last very long. And you can't ever get them back in. No, it's too hard. There you go. So put the lid on, clip it, and you've got your card game and you can travel with it. Yep. So that's my... handbags really easy. There you go. That's my... Like, if you take nothing else from this episode, and quite possibly you won't, no. <laughs> <laughs> then take that is using... I'll um, put a link to it up in the Facebook community this week and show you how we store our card games in these little boxes. Yep. We, you know, we do that for... You. We haven't got all of ours because we don't... We don't play card card games like what we do like we play sleeping queens and hanabi <laughs> and sushi go but they all come in good containers it's yeah. the like 500 cards correct and you know that don't come in good containers no, you know packets are useless so we have our you know in one of those sistema because they're excellent and they're so easy because it, it you know you know packs are really thick like there's so many you know cards and they fit Side, you know, two side oh, by the side. Best. They're perfect. Yeah. We took on the Ravel way of doing that, and they're and because the containers are so light, they fit in your handbag. Yeah. So we take, you know, every time we go out to dinner, you know, comes oh, with us. Brilliant. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hmm. Thank you, Miss Ravel, for that tip. Because my pleasure. The we're always we're a happy household because of it. Just because of that, for yep. no other reason. No other reason. It is all because of the Uno box. <laughs> Do you have any other board games or puzzle hacks to share, or are we ready for a review? Uh, no, I wanted to talk about cupboards and open shelves. Oh yeah, we were talking about that. Where point. I was like uniforming the whole world. Yeah. I think behind cupboards for board games just because they look visually messy in my humble opinion i think it depends on the age of the kids right and i also think about where the where the visualness is the visualness (laughs) i love it you just did an amy and a jared yeah i'll tell you about the visualness of it but first let me tell you about the age of the kids if they're little kids games and they need parental supervision and parental help definitely behind a cupboard door (laughs) because kids are just going to attack that and then that's when you're going to miss pieces lose pieces have eaten pieces have dogs chew pieces etc etc no good for anybody if they're um if they're for older kids or adults then i think open shelves is fine I agree with Amy, 30 by 30 boxes, game people of the world, please make them. (laughs) That would make me happy. We have uh, in our household, and this comes back to the visualizing. What did I, what word did I make up before? Visualizationing. I don't know what you said. Yeah, whatever, that word. Um, So in our household, most of our board games and our card games are in our rumpus room. And we have a big couch and it's got a bookshelf at one end and all the games are in the bookshelf That's at the un- one end. That is not visualizing for anybody. Nobody can see it yeah. unless you're right at that end of the I'm couch. i it. Or you're outside and you're looking inside <laughs> because it's that far into the... That. That's great. So um, that works really well for our family and they're all mostly... Most of the, our games are together. There are some in the playroom just because we... Like spreading our stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We have everything in one. Our linen cupboard is our games cupboard, so we don't keep any linen in a cupboard. It's a games cupboard. Yeah, so I, I wanted to talk about where you store your games as well, like you've just said in your linen slash games cupboard, and I've told you where ours are. And so I wanted to encourage listeners to think about where they store their games. Like do you – want the kids to have easy access to them or do you, do you need to get them down for them or is it something that you do together and then also to think about can consider where it is that you will play with them um or, or where you can be inspired to play with them for instance if they're locked away in the cupboard and you it just never crosses your mind to get out a board game because you they're behind a cupboard mm. and you know, if you're a visual yeah. person like you me need to see them. and you need to see them to be reminded to do that activity with the kids instead of, you know, watching Netflix for the 30th hour of the school holidays <laughs> or hour two of the school holidays, <laughs> um, then maybe put them out in a cupboard shelf and like, oh, not a cupboard, maybe have them in an open shelf so that you are inspired to play with them. 
So there's my there's my last thoughts on. Can I Gantt have one final thought, please? Oh no! It's very... Only I am allowed to have final <laughs> thoughts. By hook or be by crook, I'll be last in this book. Um, similar to what I said in the Lego episode, is having a container that is for the random Lego pieces that you find. Mm. We have a similar container in our board game cupboard, and that is just like a Sistema container where if we find a random card, a random piece, a random dice, a random anything, we just put it in there rather than the effort of finding that board game, opening it up, opening the snap block bag, putting it in, putting it away. We just put it in there and then when we pull out that game, we just grab the piece. Yeah. So that's my final tip. Nice hack. Thank you. Pleasure. Your turn to read the review from Michelle 199. So practical and heartfelt, I go from laughing out loud to eyes welling up from the poignancy and genuine love for their tribe. Kessie and Amy are so funny. Thanks, Michelle. Relatable and down to earth. They are continuing to give me great inspiration and motivation on my personal decluttering mission with practical tips, personal growth mantras, and just great company. I feel like I have two mates chatting as I do the work. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Love it. It's pretty good. If you are inspired by our podcast and would like to inspire other people, then we would love it if you left a, left a review wherever you get your podcast from. Most apps have a review capacity um, or you can always email us at hello at theartofdecluttering.com.au and send us your feedback, good or bad, we take it all. Excellent. Well, enjoy a board game this week. I know I'm all inspired to go home and play a board game as well. Kirst, have a great week. See you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you've learned something awesome today, we'd love you to leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook so others can find our podcast too. Don't forget you can see the show notes in your podcast app or over at our website, artofdecluttering.com.au. So if there's anything you want more info on, check it out there. If you'd like to join our supporter community, you can do so over at patreon.com slash decluttering. We hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the freedom.